everyone. Uh, I've been getting some questions uh, in through uh, the email and through Facebook. And so today I wanted to just address one of the questions that's come in. And so I'm going to read the question and then I'll give you the best answer I got for you. Okay. Here's the question. Came in from uh, someone through email. Though I feel uh, free from my toxic family now, I often struggle with doubting whether I did the right thing by cutting them out of my life. I miss them often, too, and I dis despite the huge amount of pain caused by them. Is it more Christian to allow them to be limited part of my life and maintain strict boundaries, or is cutting them out uh, the right path? I often second-guess myself and feel guilty about whether it was the, uh, a dramatic response. Though I'm not sure... I could bear the thought of reinitiating re contact when there has been no repentance. So I know many of you probably can relate to that, and I certainly can. I mean, I have relationships in my family with, with siblings that I don't really have a relationship with them because of their unhealthy behavior. And so one thing I would want to just reiterate is that I have two rules I live by. I want to share them with you. Well, there's more than two, but these are two I'm going to share. Rule number one is no crazy allowed. Rule number two is, I decide what's crazy. So in this question, one of the things I would point out is that you testify to the fact that you felt freedom from getting the toxic people out. So I would take note of that. Um, and so when we live in an abusive environment, one of the things that happens is the people around us are doing uh, a good job of blaming us and making us responsible. So that stuff gets sort of stuck on the inside of us. So when we make a stand and we say no more, then one of the things we struggle with is feeling like we're doing the wrong thing. I say a lot of times you feel like you're breaking the cosmic rules by having a choice and not allowing someone to harm you. So I believe in a boundary setting situation like that, if, if you're weak, no contact is better than some contact because I can be Superman, super strong, do all my work, and then I get around the toxic person and they all have kryptonite in their pockets. So we have a weakness to them. So the, the boundary is not just about preventing them from harming us. The boundary is also about us gaining strength and living in the truth and not being destroyed by their lies and deception and blame shifting and all the stuff that goes with being in a toxic relationship. So there's two phases to that. One is keep them out. If you notice freedom, take note of that. That means it's working, right? And you're healing. The other is, is that you need to work on detoxing de uh, from their toxic belief structure. And that requires, you know, some time. If I, if I go and I uh, hang out with a, uh, get somebody who's on heroin and bring them into a detox, you know, those four days that they're in detox are going to be really difficult and they're going to want to go back out and use. But on the other side of those four days, that person is going to be a different person and have a chance at a life of real peace. And I would say it's real similar to those of us who have been in toxic relationships. We, you know, need the time to detox. And the truth is, it just takes time. So I really appreciate your questions. And um, I would encourage you, if you have more questions, to go sign up for my email at patrickdoyle.life. And then there's a place there at info at patrickdoyle.life where you can uh, send the questions or you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram, whatever. And again, I appreciate the questions and I look forward to answering some more.